The whole galaxy's the front line now. We're not waging a full-scale war here. We're hitting the Republic anywhere we can. An Imperial officer at the Cairn installation in the Deep Core, the warlords divided into several pocket empires, waging aggressive warfare against their rivals and building heavily fortified planets known as the Fortress Worlds. The warlords were known for spending entire fortunes to build war material and adopting pompous titles like Omnipotent Battle Leader. The two most powerful factions in the fragmented empire were the Zero Command, led by Supreme Warlord Blitzer Hask, and the Greater Maldrude, led by High Admiral Troitlan Teradoc. Hask controlled the largest territory, while Teradoc had the largest military. Harris's attempt to take control of the Atravis sector in the Outer Rim territories was opposed by Teradoc, and the mutual hatred between the Zero Command and the Greater Maldrude developed into full scale warfare. Another notable Imperial warlord was Superior General Sander Delvardus, who constructed the Executor class Star Dreadnought Nighthammer as his personal command ship. While the warlords struggled in the Deep Core, Ambassador Fergan of Corrida caused Admiral Akbar's temporal retirement and poison chief of state Morn Mothma to cripple the New Republic, which was recovering from Operation Shadow Hand. However, Corrida and its prestigious Caradon Military Academy were destroyed by the Sun Crusher superweapon, piloted by rogue Jedi Kip Durin, and Fergan himself perished during the Battle of Anub, in which he attempted to kidnap Anakin Solo and brainwash the baby into a Force-sensitive Emperor. Meanwhile, the fleet under Admiral Natasi Dala's command was discovered in the Moor Cluster. Dala launched her guerrilla campaign to overthrow the New Republic, attacking Dantooine and Morn Calamari. She also attempted to crash an Imperial Star Destroyer on Coruscant, but the plan was foiled by Durin and the Sun Crusher. Eventually, the Moor installation, the Death Star prototype and the Sun Crusher were destroyed in the Battle of the Moor installation, and Dala was believed to be dead. Following the Battle of the Moor installation, Dala fled to the Deep Core and made contact with Supreme Warlord Hask. She allied with Grand Admiral Thrawn's second-in-command Captain Pelion, who now served High Admiral Teradoc, and together they gathered Hask, Teradoc, Delvardis, Yuz and the nine other warlords to an Imperial Communications Relay Station on Sos Beacon. Dala's scheme to end the Imperial Civil War failed as the warlords refused to collaborate and organize a joint military campaign against the New Republic. Dala and Pelion assassinated the 13 most powerful warlords with nerve gas, bringing their military forces together under the banner of the Empire. The Imperial reunification in 12 Abbey, gave birth to the United Warlord Fleets, ending the Imperial Civil War and unified the feuding Imperial factions into the Imperial Remnant. Under Dala's leadership, the fleets rebuilt the weakened Imperial military by manufacturing countless walkers, starfighters and star destroyers, and even women and non-humans were allowed to work for the military. After Colonel Ivan Cronus, former second-in-command to Superior General Delvardis, joined the fleets, Dala seized the Nighthammer and renamed it the Nighthammer. While Cronus committed lightning raids to Kong, Porus Vida and the Chardan shipyards, Dala and Pelion attacked Luke Skywalker's Jedi Praxium on Yavin 4, knowing that the new Jedi Order was the most dangerous menace against the Empire. However, the Battle of Yavin 4 was a military disaster for the fleets, as Pelion's fleet was pushed by Jedi Knight Dorsk 81 to the edge of the Yavin system, Cronus perished with his command ship, and the Night Hammer fell into Yavin Prime. After the battle, Dala turned command over to Vice Admiral Pelion. Pelion now Supreme Commander of the Imperial Navy, relocated the Imperial Remnant to the Outer Rim and annexed the Pentaster alignment. The fortress world of Bastion, formerly known as Sartininian, became the capital of the new Imperial Remnant, and the Council of Moths was established to succeed the Diet of Imperial Planetary Governors. Several more defeats occurred over the ensuing years, forcing the Imperial Remnant into eight backwater sectors in the Outer Rim territories. Seeing that defeat was imminent, Pelion finally admitted the need to sue for peace. In 19 Abbey, after a peace accord was signed on board the Chimera with the New Republic's representative Pomp Gavrisum, the remnant then settled into a period of stability and had finally ended the Galactic Civil War. This ended the Galactic Empire's regime over the galaxy, after 38 years of humanocentric dictatorship, as opposed to Palpatine's promising 10,000-year rule. In the years following the Galactic Civil War, the Imperial Remnant would ally itself with the New Republic's successor the Galactic Alliance in the Yuzhan Vong War and the Swarm War, but were a grey area in the Second Galactic Civil War, between the Imperial Remnant, Confederation and the Galactic Alliance.